we're going to run an experiment that models the wild type and the mutant worms in a high salt environment. For this experiment, we are going to need two dialysis tubes, which is a semi-permeable membrane that allows water to pass through freely, but not larger molecules like glycerol. So these basically represent the skin of the worm. We also need two different glycerol solutions. This is a high glycerol solution, which is a 50% glycerol solution, and a low glycerol solution. This is a 3% glycerol. So these represent the two types of worms, the wild type and the mutant worms. We need two trays to hold our worms in, and these trays are filled with salt. Uh, some binder clips or rubber bands to hold the ends of the dialysis tubing, uh, something to weigh them with, and then a data table. So what we're going to do here, I'm taking the low glycerol solution, I'm filling one of the dialysis tubes with it, like that. I'm going to twist the top, tighten it up, put on a binder clip, I'm going to do the same thing with a high glycerol solution. Clip it on there, fill it up, and clip this. We don't need to be very particular about the amounts because we're going to go by weight, not volume. So the next thing is to bring our scale over here. Turn it on, get our low glycerol solution worm, and uh, it is weighing 19 grams, so I'm going to put that on the data table. Our initial mass, so that's today's mass, and our high glycerol solution, and that weighs 21 grams. So put that again on our data table. And then we're going to put both of the worm simulations in a bed of salt. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more salt over the top. just to make sure that the worms are touching a good amount of salt. And then we are going to leave these here for 24 hours and come back and weigh them and see what they look like tomorrow. So you might make your prediction if you have one tube that is full of glycer a high glycerol solution and a low glycerol solution, which do you think is going to lose the most water in a high salt environment? Hi, we are back to check on our semi-permeable membranes filled with glycerol solution to see how much mass they've lost in about 24 hours due to water leaving the tube. I'm going to dip it in some water just to get rid of the salt and dry it off a little bit. And it now weighs 10 grams. So that is our low glycerol final mass is 10 grams. It also looks very thin and the salt has a lot of moisture on it. Okay, our high salt solution, again, get rid of the salt, and it weighs 18 grams. All right, so it still has quite a bit more liquid inside it, and the salt is not quite as wet. So what we do with these numbers is we are going to figure out the percent change and the way you do that is you need to find out the difference in mass. So you take your final mass, which in this case is 10 grams. You subtract from it the initial mass, which was 19 grams, which gives us a change of minus 9 grams. We're then going to divide that by the initial mass, which was 19, and then multiply by 100 to get our percent, and we have lost 47%, uh, percent. so that's a negative 47% change. All right, let's see about the percent change for the high glycerol. Uh, our final was 18 minus 21, our initial equals, divided by uh, 21, 
That gives us 14. We're going to multiply that by 100 for our percentage. And uh, this one has only lost 14% change. So there you have it. The high glycerol made a big difference in as far as how much water moved through the semi-permeable membrane out of the tube and into the salt uh, environment.